Hello my friends, welcome back to What The K, where we test out Korean beauty products to decide whether they are worth your hard earned money. Today we are going to be literally bubbling my face off. Today on What The K, we're going to be testing out the Eliza Vecca Milky Piggy Carbonated Bubble Clay Mask. And this just looks like a whole heck of a lot of fun and I cannot wait to try it. So let me tell you a little bit about it. I did buy this on Amazon for $10.25 from Eliza Vecca. They, pr the price kind of goes up and down. So the price right now is $11.76. You can also get it on iHerb.com. I will link those down below. It is $12.76. 60 cents from iHerb. You can also find this on Mimi Box's website, but they don't actually sell it on Mimi Box's website. They just kind of direct you to the Amazon link. So just so you know, it's there too. And uh, me, but Mimi Box has a lot of really good information about it, including what it's good for. So the claims for this are that it's going to exfoliate. That's where we're going to be bubbling my face off. It's going to exfoliate my skin. It's going to unclog my pores. It's going to deliver nutrients into my skin. It's going to tighten my pores. It's going to fight against future clogging. It's going to cleanse my skin. You can use this as a makeup remover, hence why I have this beat up looking makeup on my face right now. It's supposed to be skin softening and smoothing for a youthful glow. The tips on Mimi Box's websites were very interesting. Most interesting were where it said it's suitable for almost all skin types, especially oily. However, those with sensitive skin types should first test the product on a small area of the skin. And we'll get into a little bit more of that when we get into ingredient analysis. And speaking of that, it's actually time for ingredient analysis. So I kind of went from the top to the bottom of the ingredients and once it started getting into the preservatives for the product, I'm assuming we're beyond that 1% line. If you don't know cosmetics in the United States, we only need to have them listed in order up to where it's more than 1% of the entire product. So you could have 0.0001% of the product be something and you can still include it in the ingredient list. So I kind of threw out those ingredients. I will list them down below in case you're curious what they are, but there's like a bunch of leaf extracts and different things that were like really low down. I'm not even going to talk about those. We're just going to talk about the top half of the ingredient list. So the first thing is the coca mido propyl betaine, betaine, betaine. It's irritation concerns on that one which is probably the sensitive skin bit. Also irritation concerns on dipropylene glycol. Then we get into some things that, that would be the positive ingredients that would make this a really good mask. So we have disodium cocoamphodiacetate, Truth in Aging, which is a website that I really enjoy. It says it's highly valued for cleansing the skin or hair without stripping of it, it of its natural oils and is thus incorporated into many moisturizing cosmetic cleaning products. So I'll put the link to that down below. Green tea is also in this. I talked a lot about green tea in the last What the K because that was the major ingredient in the clay mask we did last week. So I will link that video down below in case you're curious about that. But the gist of it is that the limited studies that talk about the effects on the skin talk about it being anti-aging, anti-inflammatory, and anti-carcinogenic. Also, there's glycerin in here, which is a nice skin balancing ingredient. Bentonite, which is an oil absorbing ingredient. Collagen, charcoal powder, and then we get into the preservatives. So some other things that are kind of negatives in here are sodium laureth sulfate. That's usually found in shampoos. I thought it was interesting that it was in here. So if you don't like uh, sodium laureth sulfate, if you're allergic, that's in here. Also phenoxyethanol, methylparaben, and also fragrance is in here. So if any of that causes you alarm, just so you know, those are the major ingredients. The entire ingredient deck will be in the description. So now we're going to go ahead and use this, and I'm really excited about it. So let I'm going to go ahead and remove my eye makeup because because you're not supposed to put it on your eyes and I'll be right back. Eye makeup is now officially removed, so now we're gonna talk about how we use this. So iHerb says, or iHerb, I always have trouble saying iHerb, it just sounds weird to me. It says take a proper amount of the carbonated bubble clay mask to your whole face except around the eyes. After three to five minutes when the bubbles have blown up absolutely, do foam massage with a little tepid water and wash away. And it also says do not use on open wounds, eczema, dermatitis, etc. Mimi Box has a little bit more detailed directions. They say it can be applied to unclean skin as the first step in cleansing or it can be applied to clean dry skin as the last step in cleansing. And you're supposed to use the provided spatula. So let's let's look at the spatula here. Okay, so here is the container. I don't see a spatula yet. Ah, 
There is the provided spatula. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. And then we're gonna pull this off. And it does say that it's sensitive to air, so you're supposed to screw the top on really tight in between uses, whoa. It smells just very kind of fresh and clean, a little bit citrusy, but mostly like a clean candle kind of scent. So you're supposed to use the provided spatula to scoop a chestnut sized amount and apply onto the face, spread evenly and smoothly across the face with either the spatula or clean dry hands. Avoid applying too close to the eyes, nostrils and lips and the product will begin to bubble up, leave on for five minutes and then for an optional step, you can gently massage the bubbly mask all over the face for one to two minutes and then rinse off thoroughly with lukewarm water. Mimi Box also gives some little insider tips. It says you don't necessarily need a chestnut size amount, you just have to use what's good for your face to make sure your face is covered with it. And then you're supposed to keep the lid on the jar at all times when the product is not in use. Continued exposure can, to air can speed up oxidation. Before we put this on, I'm going to do a close up of my skin with my makeup on and everything so you can see how it looks before. So here is my skin. I do still have a foundation and, um, you know, a little bit of highlighter and things like that on my skin, but we'll we'll get up close and personal and see if uh, there's any difference when this is over, when this is done. All right, so I'm a little scared to do this. I'm very nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous. Okay, let's do it, we can do this. Okay, I'm scooping it out and it definitely feels a little rubbery. I'm gonna use this much and hopefully that's a good amount. Here we go. It feels rubbery. Ooh. A little bit cooling. I feel it kind of squishing, almost like marshmallow feeling. Like when you squish a marshmallow that's like really fluffy and I can see it starting to uh, puff up a little bit. Whoa! <laughs> is crazy oh my gosh you see it puffing it's puffing it's puffing ah i don't feel anything yet though it just feels cold oh here come the tingles here come the tingles oh i want to itch my nose so bad right now it just feels itchy and i hear it popping see if you can hear it can you hear my face but it's not uncomfortable except for that I just want to scratch my face. So that's the other thing. If you're texturally, like you don't like textures, you may not like this because it really feels um, itchy because it's moving very slightly on my skin. It's like these little bubbles popping. This is so weird. Oh. Oh, it feels like it's dripping down the sides of my face. Like kind of like if you have like a bead of sweat and it starts dripping down the side of your face, that's what it feels like in some places. Ooh, right here is really itchy right now. Yeah, that's totally what it feels like. Water falling, itching down my face. This is not a pleasant feeling for me. I don't enjoy this at all. I can see why some people might enjoy this, but it's not fun to, to have. I, I thought this was gonna be so much fun and I am very uncomfortable right now. Oh. Oh. I want to itch. I want to itch. Get it off. Get it off. <laughs> can I? Can I ho hold on to this for the next five minutes? Oh my gosh. Well, three minutes. Three minutes left. I've gotta tough it out. Three minutes. I can do it. Oh my gosh. It's getting worse. There's more bubbles. I thought it would feel good, but it doesn't. It just feels really tickly. I'm looking, looking at myself, I look like a dirty Santa Claus. Oh, it's over, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash this off with some warm water and I'll be right back. Get it off me! All right. So that was an experience. Yeah, I have the best job ever. <laughs> like, just the fact that I get to do this for a living just makes me so happy. But anyway, let's go ahead and zoom in on my face so you can see how it looks up close. So here is my after face. How am I looking? Do my pores look smaller? Do I look cleansed?
So I'm gonna go ahead and take this Bioderma soaked cotton pad and rub it down my face to see if there's any makeup left because it was supposed to remove my makeup. So let's see. And there is absolutely no makeup on here. So it works great as a cleanser. It totally, completely worked. My face feels drier than a desert. Like my face feels super tight. If there was any mask that I have used since I've been starting to do What the K, this one made my face feel the driest, definitely. I don't know where the glycerin is, but I need some moisturizer in my life right now. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't think I'm gonna be using this anymore. I think I'm gonna pass it on. It, I'm about to send my reporters a bunch of decluttered stuff. I'm gonna see if anybody wants this. I don't think I'm gonna use this again. It did not feel good. It was so tickly. The best thing way I can describe it is if you had someone constantly tickling your nose with a feather, or, you know, all over your skin. I mean, if you've ever been in a bubble bath where you've let bubbles pop on your skin and kind of let it, it's not like that. Like I thought it was gonna be more like that, but it was more intense than that like it was so incredibly tickly the whole time and it just didn't feel good I don't know I, I expected it to feel more tingly rather than tickly and it just it wasn't what I expected so I am NOT a fan of this for me personally but I can see where people would really enjoy this if you do like that I'm very sensitive to texture on my face so this is definitely not made for me but that doesn't mean it's not made for you uh, as far as the ingredients go they're Meh, they're okay. I mean, there's yeah. I there's definitely some things in here I wish it didn't have in it. The good ingredients that are in here are not like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. I mean, there's collagen, but I don't. I, it's starting. The collagen gets a little close to that one percent line where I think the one percent line is, as does the charcoal powder. So I don't know, man. I I feel like this is more of a fun product and a way to cleanse your face. This thing has so many good reviews on Amazon. Everybody seems to love this stuff. I think I might be the only person on the planet that doesn't like it. So it just, it was too tickly for me. I couldn't handle it, but maybe you can. Maybe this is something that sounds fun to you and that you want to try And I'm definitely not going to discourage you from doing that. It just, it's not for me, for my personal taste. So I want to thank you so much for watching What the K this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely make sure you subscribe so you don't miss What the K next week. Next Monday, we will be testing out something very different. We're going to be doing a little lip balm. This is the Skin Food Honey Lip Balm. Isn't it so cute? I have it in my intro and I saw it and I was like, you know what? I'm going to break down and I'm going to get it. So we're going to be talking about this little cute little honey lip balm next week. So again, thank you so, so much for watching. Mad love. And I will see you in a video soon. Bye.